morning, everyone. Bear with me one moment. I'm just going to refresh my computer and share this over to my page. Computer's a little slow, so it might take me a few minutes. Make sure the sound is off. So you're not hearing me in stereo. Okay, we are good to go. Good morning. This week I'm offering something a different, a little bit different if you use the host code. Again, my name is Mary Jo Snyder. Welcome to MJ Shady Inkers. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I'm so glad that you are here with me this morning. Uh, happy Sunday. So this is the host code for this week. If you purchase $50 in product before tax and shipping in my online store through today, through Friday the 28th, you will get six card bases that coordinate with the gorgeous Posies card kit, six Whisper White envelopes, and a free pack of basic pearls. So that again, if you purchase $50 worth of product, you'll get these items free. But the best part of this is if you purchase the kit itself, which we'll show you that in a few minutes, if you purchase the kit, and if you purchase this coordinating stamp set for the projects I'm sharing with you today, then you will get these, it will equal a dollar, it will equal $51 plus tax and shipping. So you will qualify for that. Another added bonus when you order from my online store during each month, you get a free product project tutorial. And it's just a PDF of instructions. And this is for August. So if you place that order in my online store, and I know I owe some of you this PDF and I'm gonna work on that this weekend. Um, actually later on today, I'll get those in your email. Um, I had some issues with my email this week because my um, service provider changed their server and everything kind of got lost, but we're all squared away. So I had like zero contacts in my email. So it was a little scary, but everything's back where it needs to be. So I can get these, um, this tutorial bundle, um, PDF instructions in your email to you. If you placed an order of $35 or more during the month of August, again, these are August projects. It is from the Demos Design Dream Team, and it's 16 um, Stampin' Up! demonstrators all collaborate and put these projects together so that we can offer you a little added bonus and perk for placing orders with us. So this, I can show you actually the card that I created for this project um, for, a, for August, and this is mine, and it uses the memory and more um, the every... Flowers for Every Season, I remembered it this time. Flowers for Every Season, um, uh, Memories of More card pack, and some coordinating card stock, and the, obviously the daisy punches, and that gingham, um, bumblebee gingham ribbon, and the new in color uh, enamel dots. So it uh, was no stamping whatsoever involved for my project, so, but that is the project that I featured for this um, August bundle, so trying to find where mine is. There it is. See, there's the little snippet of it right there. So that's just a little added perk for customers for placing those orders. And of course, my team gets the tutorial for free every month. So um, again, so use this host code, place orders of $50 or more, you get those free items, um, and you'll get that uh, PDF uh, tutorial. Okay, so I'm going to show you this again at the end of my broadcast. This is just a reminder of that amazing fall. Um, autumn themed treat packages are perfect to bring the joys of the season to any occasion. So you can use this kit to create um, projects, your little 3D products projects, excuse me, you have until September 10th to subscribe um, to receive this kit. And you know me, I always make alternates. So if people don't like those 3D projects that come in the paper pumpkin kit, I'm going to show you a different way to use your kit um, so that you can make cards and other projects with it, just so you know. I always do that with paper pumpkin. Um, good morning, Gail. Hi, everybody. Hi, Valerie. Sorry, I'm missing comments. Hi, Joette. Um, Oh, thanks, Joette, for tagging somebody in this. Hi, Beverly. Hi, Gayla. Hello. Good morning. Okay, so we are featuring, so the kits start on page seven, six and seven in your annual catalog. And I'm going to show you, this is the kit that we are using today. It makes all of these beautiful cards. You make 16 cards for each of four designs. 
Um, you get a beautiful decorative box, all the elements you need to embellish, and the stamp set is an additional purchase. So the stamp's not included. The inks, the adhesives, you will need to have already on hand or purchase those. So again, the kit is $32 and the stamps are 19. So putting those together, it will allow you to get all those great perks um, that I'm offering today. Hi, Lynn, I haven't seen you in forever. I hope you are well. Hi, Dana. So we're gonna, we're gonna open this kit and I do wanna show you all the amazing coordinating colors. And I have to tell you that I'm super excited about this kit and I've held off putting um, it together. Uh, it is, uh, a few of the colors actually were my wedding colors. So you know I'm gonna be scrapbooking with some of these elements. So there is Blushing Bride, Soft Sea Foam, Mint Macaron, Shaded Spruce. That's all I have left in my purple posy. <laughs> uh, Highland Tether, Gorgeous Grape, Blackberry Bliss, Whisper White, and Gold are the coordinating colors in this kit. That's a lot of colors, so you have to probably have some of that on hand, right? I'm gonna keep these out. And you know me, I love purple, so I'm super excited that every shade of purple is in this kit. And I also am one that does traditional scrapbooking. So I picked out these three colors, Purple Posy, Mint Macaron, and I believe that is Highland Heather, and I am gonna do a scrapbook page. Um, I may not get it completely done while we are here today, but I am gonna try and work on that because I wanna share with you. I know I need to get right to it instead of doing all this talking, but I, this is fun for me. So these were little scrapbooks. They're totally not stamping up, but it's okay. I had this little machine that would bind and all that stuff. These were little, now mind you, we just had our ninth wedding anniversary. And this um, is supposed to be a gift to <laughs> one, uh, my friend Angela, who actually uh, read a scripture at our wedding, and she designed our um, little, uh, what do you want to say, our booklet that we had, I don't want to say a flyer, but our little brochure of the day, and it listed all the events inside, and she had designed that, and that's Angela and her husband, Richard. So... As you can see, I'm gonna flip through some of these pages. Our colors were purple and sage. And there's my, my babies, they're so grown now. But you can see that the colors mirror perfectly um, with our wedding colors. So I can't wait to, I need to get some more pictures printed um, so that I can work on that. But how great are these pictures going to look with, with this purple or this gorgeous posy? Um, <laughs> fun stuff, memories, and of course, it's never too late to live happily ever after. Anyway, so we're, I'm looking forward to, um, I need to get this to Angela. I'm looking forward to doing some scrapbook pages, so I'll try and work on that as well. I may not complete the layout today, but I will try and get one done so that you can um, see alternate projects. So this is the stamp set. It is one of those cling stamp sets and you have 10 stamps, wonderful greetings. And now the greetings, some of it may apply to um, our, our wedding, but I definitely will incorporate alternate greetings as well when I do my scrapbooking. So this is what the kit comes in. Nice box. You get all this amazing stuff. Let me get this box out of the way. All right, so this is a kit full of instructions. And it's, I like it because they're visual and they're numbered. So you can revert back to the English instructions, find the number on right here for the steps. And you could see like number five. So number five for that project, you would hear using Stampin' Dimensionals. So it's really easy to um, work through all this, um, the instructions here. And we're gonna make the cards as a kit instructs. And if I have time, I will definitely work on that scrapbook page. All right, this is the gorgeous box that um, has all of the goodies in it. Isn't that beautiful? Just love it. And it's very, it's like definitely some hard chipboard. Open it up and you have all these amazing things inside. So this is your card kit. You have some embellishments. It looks like you have some Highland Heather um, twine and beautiful kind of like an organdy ribbon with some gold uh, 
seams in there. So that's really pretty as well. It will tell you in the instructions how much you need to cut of the ribbon for each project. So we're gonna open this up and I'm gonna grab a card base of each card. Of course you have coordinating envelopes in here as well. Okay, I try not to trip over my dog. She's laying on my floor. So these, so these are the card layers. So you have layers and you have card bases. So you have four of those. So we'll keep one of those out. You have four of these, beautiful. Keep one of those. You get four of these as well. And four of those. So I'll keep one each. We'll set these back in the beautiful box that they come in. And your card bases. So there are four, actually there's eight, it looks like, of the Blushing Bride. So we're gonna keep two of those. Those are Blushing Bride. You have Purple Posy, so we'll keep one of those. There's four of those. And you have Soft Sea Foam. So we're gonna keep one of those and you get four of those. And these are the coordinating envelopes. Okay, beautiful. These are your tags. So you have die cut tags, there's six of those. You have these die cut tags. You have these beautiful little, um, these are just um, die cut images, they're not self-adhesive. So you get three sheets, three sheets of those, more tags. Look at all these amazing tags. So you have, uh, looks like you have extra tags in case you wanna do alternate projects with it. So that's kind of cool, right? We like that. Here is a project that I created um, for a team challenge uh, that I did with Missy Shipman. And I actually cut the, let's see if I can find it. It may actually be this one here. Sorry. She sent us little bits and pieces from this kit and created a challenge for us when we did a team event. So I actually cut this piece apart. I layered it on the card base so I cut the card base in half, and then I created this little um, note card to go inside. And it says, for a very kind and thoughtful friend. So I thought that was really fun to, to do. So that was my little project for that challenge. So you can make alternate projects with this, definitely. So again, to reiterate to you, these are the um, basic pearl basic jewels. So if you again, if you place that fifty dollar order this week, you can get a pack of those free, and you will get if I can grab it, coordinating card bases of different colors. So these are six different colors that coordinate. So you may get six different um, card bases. The colors may vary in your in your kit that you get from me and six whisper white envelopes so you'll get those as well so that way if you buy this purple or this i keep wanting to say purple posy <laughs> if you purchase this kit you or if you already have that kit on hand and place a 50 dollars order you'll get those items free so all right so let's go ahead and get started i know we're all anxious to see what this does so the coordinating inks that they recommend in the book let me grab that again i think they worked with uh, Blackberry Bliss, Blushing Bride, Grapefruit, uh, uh, nope, Gorgeous Grape, and Purple Posy. No, Highland Heather. We don't have Purple Posy ink because there was a, a defect with that ink. So I'm going to grab those ink colors because I haven't done that yet. Put my garbage out of the way. So we want Blackberry Bliss, Blushing Bride. I don't get to use this color enough, so I'm super excited about that. Highland Heather and gorgeous grape so you know i'm excited right i'm loving the purples i am a purple girl love purple okay so card number one set this stuff over here out of the way card number one we're gonna go as the instructions show us we want the blushing bride card base for that one and we're going to need uh this one that card front see how easy this is so you already have like designer series paper in a sense already cut down to the card layer size and we need one of the circle die cut pieces for our sentiment so we got that 
and we're going to need how much ribbon? Let's go back to the first page. Number six will tell us that we need, nope. Oh, it says right here. So there's additional instructions next to it. 10 inches of the ribbon, okay? So we need this ribbon and I'm gonna measure out 10 inches. Grab my ribbon scissors. And it looks like we're gonna angle the end a little bit. So I'm just gonna cut a little extra so I can angle both ends like so. All right, so we have our ribbon and we're gonna need a couple of die cut pieces. And those are here. So I'll just grab a sheet of those and we're gonna need one of the Blushing Bride colors. We want a two, two leaf image and we want a one leaf image. I'm gonna grab the smaller one, like so. Okay, so we have that. And it's just, that looks like it is stamped in Highland Heather. So I'm gonna grab my stamp and it's get well soon. We all need some get well cards. I don't have enough of those. I never, I'm always making like the more cheerful, you know, happy birthday, um, you know, celebratory cards. And I forget that, you know, we definitely need to have cards for get well and thinking of you and, you know, sympathy and all those things as well. Okay, so the reverse side is white as well. So I guess if you were to make a mistake, you could flip it over. So let's go with this side and Highland Heather. We're gonna do get well. So once you get to this point of having your kit all broke down and organized on your work area, it's really easy to um, assemble and just get this uh, kit done so you have the cards on hand. Hi, Brenda, how are you? I hope you're doing well. Your daughter is entering her senior year. That's exciting. I'm sure she's excited as well. I hope the kids have a decent school year. It's a little nerve wracking. I can't, I can't deny, that's for sure. Okay, so now we're going to grab our stamp and seal. And I had everything, or oh, it's right in front of my face. <laughs> Everything organized. And you know what? I owe you guys a walkthrough of the new catalog. We haven't done that yet. I was going through some of my old posts and I remembered that after viewing that I never did that with you guys. I also owe you um, tutorials on making those gifts that I gave to everybody for the retreat. I only did one on my um video a couple weeks ago so I want to be sure that I finish those as well so they're on my to-do list and whether they're pre-recorded and loaded up onto YouTube that'll be one thing I'll share the link or I will just um, try and remember to come live and do those because I don't like to say that I'm gonna do something and then not do it it's just not it's just not good for for my business and it's not fair for all of you if you get excited about wanting to see something I just ran my finger on that a little bit so let me just trim that some more my goal is just to um, start taking more notes when, like this morning, I completely, and I was trying to be all prepared, I completely forgot to draw the winner of last week's, you know, um, prize patrol winner. So I'll have to get on that too. So when you are doing um, layering the ribbon like that in kind of a zigzag, I usually start out with putting a little bit of adhesive right on my card base and just um, layering. I want to do it this way. Yeah, that's right. The um, ribbon here, I feel like I need to iron it. It's all wonky because it's been in my in my kit. So then you can just come again and put some more adhesive down. And if you if you struggle with um, the seal, there's definitely easy ways to use that. And I'm learning slowly. I know you've watched me previously trying to thinking I'm fighting with it. And then you just literally do that zigzag like that and just layer, keep layering on top of each other. It's hard to use it on ribbon, so if you're struggling, just grab some glue dots. So, like I said, this kit does not come with ink. It's not all-inclusive. The stamp sets are separate, and it does not come with a block. So you would definitely need to make sure you have those things on hand. It's wonderful to have kits that you can um, purchase just a few additional projects to make them work. All right, so we need some, definitely need some dimensionals here. 
because I'm pretty sure if you're looking at the instruction for this piece, number four and six. We already got the ribbon down and that's adhered, adhered with the seal, but again, number four says um, Stampin' Highland Heather, which we did, and that gets layered, and I think I actually was supposed to layer the, the top layer with dimensionals, but I didn't do that because I didn't read in advance. Um, but you will use Stampin' Dimensionals for your sentiment as well. It's not a big deal if I chose to use Seal. Um, it actually will decrease the cost of shipping it. So, Or if I didn't use Dimensionals on the, um, the base layer, it will just cost less, like your normal postage. So you have that. That goes right there. It's so pretty already. And then these, you want to... I'm going to grab my flower... And I'm going to put a little bit of seal on there, like so. And then I'm going to come in and try and adhere these leaves to the underside. Because when I put this, just like it's showing here, when I put this on my card front, I want to make sure that I can put dimensionals on there. And a way to do that, so you go ahead, you have those adhered together, if I can pick it up now like so, and now that they're adhered together, you can reinforce the t them being together with dimensionals because those are gonna get dimensionals as well. And you wanna make sure that you're not, you're leaving a little bit of room here because that part is gonna layer over the circle sentiment that you've already put down there. And it's you want it to be the same height, like so. Okay, right, that was easy. So there's your first card, simple enough. So now for the second card, we're gonna grab our soft sea foam card base. So we have that. And the soft sea foam layer. I got some ink there, but it's gonna get covered. And we need some of these circles. You need one in Blushing Bride and Highland Heather. And it looks like you want two of the bigger leaves, I think. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, so we'll set those aside. We need one of the longer tags. So we got that tag. And now we're going to grab our sentiment. So you will need a variety of blocks for this stamp set. And I can tell you that, wow, it doesn't list the blocks on here anymore. Bummer. So the blocks that coordinate, you could get away with using D and H. The D block I just, um, is this size. Let me grab one. Here's the D block, the standard D block. This is like my go-to. Most A lot of stamps fit on the D block. Sometimes they call for you to get like the smaller block, but you know, it's not, it's not really necessary. You can save money and um, get just the D block. And this is the H block because it's going to fit this stamp. So we want to make this sure this is straight. So I'm going to try and line it up to the edge of the stamp versus lining it up as the words on my right here okay my like my blocks I just washed them not too long ago and this looks like we are going to stamp in number three or is it seven number three you're gonna stamp in gorgeous grape so we're just ink up our stamp make sure it's the right way and hopefully I'm gonna test it here against one of the lines to make sure it's straight that looks crooked right there. When you have those long sentiments, sometimes it's easier to line it up on your paper and then put it on your block because you can see this is crooked every time I stamp it. So let's do that. Let's set this down, pick it up on our block and try and be where we need to be. I'll grab some ink again and I'm gonna test it again because I want this to stamp straight. Oh, it's all wonky. That's why you get grid paper, so that you know where you're stamping. That is really crooked. I'll get her. <laughs> Sorry, thanks for your patience. It's a little better. All right, let's go stamp this. That's why we have a reverse side, right? 
It's perfect now. Look at that. Okay. So we have our sentiment. Set that aside. And we can go ahead and start building. Again, they want us to put dimensionals on this. I'm going to refrain from doing that because I want these to not cost so much for me to put in the mail. So... I just, it's just my personal preference because I'm going to add dimensionals to other pieces. So keep that in mind. Because, you know, the main goal of making these cards is to send them in the mail. So I'm going to cover up that spot on that card base. I think I brushed some ink on my fingernail. So there, are, there's that. You have that on your card base. Now we're going to cut a piece. Let's see what the ribbon size. So that's the ribbon size is five inches, so grab your ribbon. You're gonna cut, I'm gonna cut just a smidge more. And usually they give you a little bit more, but don't be too generous when you're um, with yourself when you're cutting this, because you don't wanna run out of the ribbon. I just wanna snip a piece so it's where I need it to be. All right, now I'm gonna come in and put some adhesive. Now you wanna make sure that because adhesive is going to show through so just be be careful where you're doing that that goes up a little bit higher like right about here so and this ribbon is very delicate i keep fraying it do you see that so try not to pull on the ends but i'm going to leave it just because i don't want to shorten it anymore and you come in with your dimensionals on this piece on your sentiment goes over that so you can still see the ribbon so you have that you want some twine so how many inches of the twine you need five inches it doesn't tell you that it just says the ribbon so seven let's go with number seven you want ten inches of the twine so we're gonna find that and we're gonna measure ten inches now when I have like linen thread or anything on a spool like this, I always run it through my fingers so that I can straighten it. Cause sometimes it's really difficult to tie those bows when you don't have straight twine. And you're just gonna come in here and tie a bow and it's probably way more than you really need, but they're being generous, which means they gave us a lot of twine. So you can actually come in and make some adjustments and you're gonna trim that. That's a lot of waste, if you ask me. So you could probably get away with six to seven inches of twine to tie your bow, if you are able to tie without any issues. Um, some people have um, issues if the, if the twine, I even have issues if the twine is not long enough, I'm manipulating it in my fingers, depending on how sore my wrist is during the day or when I'm crafting. So now we need these pieces and we're gonna build this and it looks like we got some dimensionals there. So here's what I wanna do. I'm gonna put a little bit of, of adhesive on the purple tone flower, so the Highland Heather. I'm gonna pick this one up like so. And it looks like actually, yeah, it's dimensionals, yep. Okay, and then we're gonna add some. It's hard for me to use this um, seal on small pieces. I, I kind of struggle a little bit there, but it is okay. So we're gonna add one leaf there and the other leaf kind of comes out from the top of these like so, maybe. So we got that going on and it's kind of pulling apart on me, but that's okay. Come in there with a dimensional and we're gonna reinforce those seams so that it's all stuck together like so. So you have those dimensionals in spots where it's gonna hold all that together. Hold on, I'll show you. You see, it's got all those pieces kind of adhered together with the dimensionals. So we're gonna come in here and not on there, I was gonna put it right there. <laughs> this is my card, what a dork. And we're gonna put that right there. And then we're gonna get a mini glue dot, which I have over here. Isn't that funny? I was trying to put it right over the picture. 
Oh, gracious. I'm gonna take your pick tool, and because these are bigger than the twine, I'm gonna fold it over, and then I'm gonna put it where I want it. Come in here with my twine, adhere that right there, like so. Come in with my ribbon scissors, and I'm gonna snip these. You can keep these relatively long, but I wanna make sure they're not getting all bent up in the, the card, so. So there's that one, pretty, right? Okay, so on to the next page. We got two more to do. And let's see. Hi, Julie. Hi, Mary. Hi, Paula. Thanks for being here. Hi, Melissa. I'm just scrolling through. Good morning, everyone that I miss. Let's see. All right, so we got this pretty one. We're gonna just kind of fold that over. So I need the one with the gold trim around it, like so, and our purple posy card base. So we have that, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and adhere this again with seal. And that goes to the top. The flowers go towards the top of this card base and you could switch it around if you wanted to. And then we need one of the smaller tags. I'm gonna grab a drink. I heated my coffee up twice so far. All right, and this is stamped in Number one, let's see what color that is. I bet that is Blackberry Bliss. So you're gonna be using various colors, but if you only have one of the coordinating ink pads, you can use that, or even black. You can you can use Memento Black ink on your um, for your stamping. You don't have to, if you don't have those colors, you can still utilize this, um, this kit stamp. So I need for a very kind and thoughtful friend. I like that sentiment. And we're gonna line that up like this. And I know sometimes I do it crooked and sometimes I do it straight on. So um, I'm gonna stamp off and see if I can do it straight. And we got some good ink coverage, so we're good. And just go ahead and stamp that right on there, like so. All right, so now we need one of the, those, one of those. Actually, I think it's the bigger one. We'll grab the bigger, bigger one there. And I'll use this one. Okay, so we have that. And we are going to cut three and a half inches of the ribbon. So three and a half. Again, we're gonna angle the end. And three and a half, right about there, like so. I think it's a little longer than it needs to be. Yeah, I'm gonna trim this end again. Very delicate ribbon, I'm finding, so definitely be careful with that. All right, so we're gonna come in here, I'm gonna put some adhesive down, and I'm gonna lay this down on it. Maybe it'll be easier for me. There, so I'm not fraying the ends. All right, probably should go up a little higher. Actually, hmm, yeah, we'll leave it there. It can go up a little higher, like the image, but we're okay. It'll be fine your dimensionals and I'm just gonna cut a strip of dimensionals from this sheet. I like to use all of my dimensionals. I don't like to waste them. That's what they're there for. Like so. Yep, that looks good. And now, 
think I moved my flowers all around. I'm gonna grab, you know what I'm gonna do? Let's try it with some glue dots. Just grab on the ends where you're gonna put those leaves. Just put a couple glue dots. It might be easier to work with than the seal. Come in with your leaves and we're gonna put those right there. Those might be a little bit too big, but that's okay. And we're gonna get that one like so. And then you can come in with your dimensionals because that's gonna get popped up. And I'm gonna grab one of these and I'm just gonna put it right there in the center. And you can use your mini dimensionals as well. And this one I'm gonna layer down here because it looks like we're gonna put this over there. Hopefully I got this going on right. So we can come in and go like this. So that part that's flush, and it looks like it needs to go over a little bit because of that leaf is hanging off the card. And I'm gonna bring this up and probably ruin everything I just did. Oh, move that. Sorry. Let's try that again. Got all wonky on me. Because you don't want the, the leaf to hang over the card. Sorry, this twisted on me. So just hold that. There you go, that's better. So there's that one. Really pretty. So there's that. And then the next one, we need, again, the Blushing Bride base. And we're on the back side now. Blushing Bride. And this one with the kind of the um, pinkish hue, the Blushing Bride hue on there. The card is going to open this way, and the flowers are going to go right there. So the key with this um, adhesive is to hold it straight up. Before we were used to running snail like this, you wanna come in straight up so it breaks where it needs to and you just lift up or flick your wrist back. That's an easy way to remember for this, this adhesive. Okay, so we have that. We need four inches of the ribbon. So we're gonna cut four inches, so that's right about there. That's crooked. All right, so we got our ribbon and it looks like we actually can trim this straight. Okay, so there's your ribbon. We're gonna put this right up here. So let's put some adhesive down like so. Okay, so there's your ribbon, we got that. We need this tag right here. And celebrate your day. This would be a very pretty wedding card. And my niece just got married yesterday. That was wonderful. Um, wonderful and she stayed within guidelines. So that was even amazing. Um, she cut her guest list, list more than half because of um, the executive orders by the governor. So she um, and her now husband um, made sure that they were not compromising anyone by not doing what they needed to for the wedding due to COVID regulations. So and we were able to go and we, um, you know, we had masks on for part of it, but then when we sat with people that we are with most often, like our immediate family. Um, we took our masks off to eat and all that stuff. So it was really a lot of fun. It was a beautiful day. It was a beautiful ceremony. And we are so happy to have her husband, James, as our family. So they're gonna have a beautiful life together. And I gotta tell you, you know, I know that Italian cookies and cannolis and all that stuff are definitely a tradition in our family when you go to Italian weddings. 
Um, that was so amazing to have those traditions going on. And of course, your kind of traditional songs that you listen to and um, just fun stuff. Like it brought back a lot of memories when I was younger going to the traditional Italian weddings. The food was delicious. Um, she loves Funfetti cake. So that's what her cake was. Her wedding cake was Funfetti. So how cute is that? Um, so, and it was delicious. Uh, yeah, it was just, it was really nice. It was nice to, to just celebrate their day. Um, they're just, they're just beautiful people and we love, we love them so much. So it was nice. All right. So there's that. And we have, um, we're going to take one of the purple flowers the uh, Highland Tether and, and Lighter Tones. One of those there, and we want some of these bigger leaves and one of these. So we got our leaves. So this is, we've done four cards and this is what we have left on this sheet. Now granted, you're gonna use some of these on your additional cards, but you have plenty to work with to create other projects, just so you keep that in mind. All right, so with this, I'm gonna leave this separate because I'm gonna adhere that last. I'm gonna come in here with my glue dots again and just pick up some of these glue dots, just two of them, so that I can put the leaves on the back side, like so. And we're going to come in and adhere these. If you guys have questions, I'm sorry, I'm all into the moment. <laughs> come in with these leaves and we'll come in here with that and trying to think actually it looks like we're gonna come over here with this leaf let me un unattach that that one's gonna go right there it's getting hot in my room because my door's shut all right now we're gonna come in with our dimensionals and we're going to so what i want is to make sure that we have because this is going to go like this so the leaf I want to leave free of um, dimensionals, this smaller leaf. You can put some dimensionals here, like so. And I'm gonna grab a glue dot for the back side of this one so that it adheres to my sentiment. Now that I have that a mess, we're just gonna lay that there because it fell apart on me and that's fine. We're gonna come in here and this goes like this, right? I think I faced the leaf the wrong way. I don't think it really makes a difference, but we want it to look like what we're going, going from. So that goes there. And then we're gonna come in. I'm struggling, sorry. My dimensional is not in the right spot. Now we're gonna come in with this one. We are going to adhere that so it will get a little bit of a dimensional. So you can grab your mini dimensionals and you can put one right here. It's just easier to put it where you're gonna lay that. And then I'm gonna put a glue dot on one side so it sticks to this. And I've already taken, <laughs> the. I'm noticing these dimensionals are not wanting to stick to this ribbon. So you might have a struggle there and that just goes there. The leaf needs to be out a little bit more, but you get the gist, that's pretty. And it looks like there's some ribbon there and I hope I didn't miss that ribbon on other instructions. Let's just take a peek. Yep, there's ribbon, the little twine is there. So we need to add twine to this card and twine to this card. Okay, so grab the last card we did and we're gonna tuck some twine in there too. So we're just, I'm gonna actually keep it on the spool because it's easier to just tie your bow and then snip the amount that you want instead of going crazy wasting twine because I want to use this in something else. And I hope you guys have time to sit with me while I kind of put together a little bit of a scrapbook page. It won't be anything too crazy. I kind of got an idea in my head, so I'm going to snip that. I'm just going to go ahead and tie another one for the other card. Again, you're just gonna tie your normal bow like you're tying your shoe. You just make sure you give yourself enough slack. I didn't there to tighten it like so. Get it where you want it. And I 
I want it a little bit smaller so it sits right, like so. Hi, Jean. There you go, like that. And let's see, I'm gonna grab my take your pick tool. I'm gonna fold over a glue dot and I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna tuck that right there. And I'm gonna pick up my twine and put that right there. So there's that one. And then this one, I'm gonna grab, it looks like this is gonna go under over here. And we're gonna come in and tuck that right there, like so. So there you go. So those are the projects as the kit instructs. So you have those two, you have this one, and you have this one. Again, you can make four each of those from this kit. Now we're gonna come in and we're gonna do a scrapbook page for all my people that like to scrapbook. Let's get that going on. I am going to actually, right ahead of time, I am going to grab celebrate your day and I'm going to figure out what color I stamped that in I want to clean that off because I want to use a purple tone so let's clean that off with our stamp and scrub and let's see we are going to I want this one set these aside I'm gonna keep this sheet out maybe some ribbon let's cut about I don't know, we'll come back to that. Let's grab our paper. So we have three different colors of paper here. So I have my Purple Posy, um, the Mint Macaron, and the um, Highland Heather. I'm gonna just kind of pull in these two colors first. Actually, this will be my base. This will be my base color, the Highland Heather. And I'm gonna grab some card bases and an envelope. So I'm gonna take an envelope Maybe I should come in with a different color. Maybe I'll use the mint. Because there's so much purple. Oh, the struggles. I don't know what I want to do. I'm going to use the, po the posy. I'm going to use the posy. I like that better. Okay. Come in with some card bases. And a couple envelopes. I'm going to use, not card bases, but the other, the matted pieces. Let me just find some of those. From my kit. Hang on, bear with me. They're all at the bottom. I put those back in the kit. I'm gonna grab that one. Actually, I think I might just keep it with the purple. So let's see. So let's keep that one and we'll do this one. And then we'll hold on to this. Okay. Now I might want to use some of those. So we have two of our envelopes, two of our um, pieces here. And let's just go ahead and grab, since we know we're using two of the cards and the card bases, you know, we'll use two of each. So we have these, okay? Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wing it. <laughs> I have no plans going on here, so bear with me. We're gonna grab our paper trimmer. <clears throat> the first thing I want to do is cut my envelopes. Now what you could do is, well, you could leave something like this down at the base and you can open that up and tuck something in there so it's now become interactive. So you can tuck something in there, um, like a photo or, you know, something. But I'm going to actually cut this apart and maybe I'll do that with another one. I kind of don't want to ruin, um, I kind of want this to be a photo mat. Do you see where I'm going with that? So let's just honestly cut off the flap. Actually, you don't even have to. Let's just seal it. We don't even have to cut this. We're gonna seal it with our, move that aside for now, grab our seal, and we're just gonna seal this envelope. Or you can grab your um, watercolor painter or water painter and you can just wet, in that, wet that and moisten it up um, to go ahead and, um, you know what I'm saying? To moisten it with your, with your water painter so that you can, instead of using seal. So we can come in here. Let's kind of check out this layout going on. We can put a photo here. 
um, we want to mat these. So let's come in and I want to put this, do I want to mat that on there or do I want to mat it on this one? I think that would be really pretty. So this is going to be a decorative piece. We're going to cut our card base in half. I don't know. I know some of you aren't really um, scrapbookers out there, but it's always nice to preserve memories. You know what I mean? I'm just going to trim that down just another smidge. So it doesn't have that. Oh, and I just messed up the edge. Let me grab the other side. We're good there. All right, cut that card base in half. So we have that. Now you see it kind of, that's not the one I wanted. Was it? I wanted this one. And I wanted to put this on it. Cut both your card bases in half. <laughs> like so. You can retain those for additional projects. And now granted, we're going to do a two-page spread, but I'm only going to do one with you. And then I'll do the other one, and you will see how that comes together. So let's, let's go ahead and layer these. I don't like that edge. Hold on. I'm going to come in here with my, it's kind of got where the, the edge was where you fold it. I just want to come in here and trim just a smidge off so it's not all bulky. Okay, and I wish I could get a hold of those guillotine cutters that were part of a deal um, when you signed up for being a demonstrator not too long ago. But unfortunately, they had them in the supply items and I didn't buy them quick enough because I was going to use them as prizes and I obviously can't do that. So, so we have that. I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to cut some ribbon and I'm going to put it, wrap it around there. So let's cut about five inches, five or six inches, it's probably about six inches. Let's measure. Seven inches. It can be a little less than that. I just want to wrap it around the, the top of this. So come in here, wrap this around. I don't want to cover that gold like so. So you have this, right? So you have that. This is where I'm going to stamp my sentiment. We're going to stamp that in gorgeous grape. Hi, Roselyn. Gorgeous grape, celebrating your day. And that's gonna go right here, I think. Sure, why not? Close that up. Come in with your dimensionals. So I'm glad that didn't land on my foot. That would have hurt. I'm sure the dog is glad it didn't land on her. Oh, I get so excited sometimes. So I want to add some dimensionals. Make sure your dimensionals are not covering those beautiful little decorative holes there. So I might need to cut that down a little bit more. I just don't want it to wobble on me. Let's just grab another piece, tiny piece to fit right there. Like so. How many of you like to scrapbook? Do any of you scrapbook out there? So we're gonna put that right there. So we have that, celebrate your day. And I'm gonna come in and I wanna get a deeper purple like this one. So let me grab my, this is some um, Blackberry Bliss. No, Gorgeous Grape. We got Gorgeous Grape going on. I wanna map that even more. So we already know that this measures half of a card base. So it's probably five and a half by four and a quarter. So we're gonna take and we're gonna trim this at five and a quarter, five and three quarters, which was totally not right. That was not the right size. Five and three quarters, which is our, all right, we're good, by four and a half. And this should mat correctly. Now you know your standard photo is 
four by six. So a lot of times I like to mat things. I like to have mats for my photos that are four and a quarter by six and a quarter so that they fit nicely. I don't have any photos right here. I have to dig some up out of my um, very unorganized cabinet that has all of my printed folders or photos on. Um, and that Julie wrote, I used to scrapbook a lot, made books for my mom to keep track of her great grandchildren who lived in Colorado. That is nice. See, and that's what's nice is when you scrapbook and you gift those to others. Um, people love that. They may not necessarily want to do the work um, that it takes to do the scrapbooking, but they truly enjoy having those memories that they can just, you know, grab out of their, off their bookshelf and just, you know, take a trip down memory lane and it kind of, especially for people that live out of state or out of town, um, distant from you, um, it's a way for you to be able to share those memories, um, you know, not just by sending a digital photo, which we're so apt in doing these days. I know this looks like a lot of dimensionals, but I just want it to stay where I need it to. Um, uh, we're so apt in just holding all of our images on our digital media. I am notorious for that. Um, and I try to back up my files too, cause you know, I would really hate to lose any images anywhere. Um, and I keep, <laughs> I keep the uh, little memory cards that you put in your, your camera and stuff. I keep those as well. I try not to override them with other photos. So I have multi ways of calling back some of those images if, if I can't find them, you know, or if I, God forbid, I have or lost them. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, it is a really nice way to, um, you know, kind of keep those memories alive and, and dear to your heart and share that love with people that don't necessarily live where, where you are. And, um, yeah, so that's, that's what, scrapbooking is actually what brought me into paper crafting. Um, and then I thought, oh my gosh, I can't get into another hobby. <laughs> um, and here I am, a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and love every second of it. So, all right. So I wanna, I'm still trying to figure out my layout. I think I wanna kinda come in here. I'm gonna put this, maybe I'll put this here, but I wanna do something decorative over here. Um, and some people may cringe. I know that we, I have, uh, <laughs> when I watch, so when we participate in Celine's Monday night crafting, where you just kind of go to her group, um, or she posts, it's a Zoom. So you go to her Zoom, log in each Monday from seven to nine. And yes, I just cut that, sorry, but I need it. Um, you go in there from seven to nine and you, just, you guys just visit and you craft and it's a lot of fun. But, uh, one of the people that I've met through that, her name is Liz, and I adore her. She's a lot of fun. Um, she cringes when you tear paper. It's just not one of her favorite things for people to do. It's not one, not, not one of the things that she prefers going on. Sorry, Liz, this probably project is probably not for you, but I'm gonna tear this paper. I just cut two inches by 12 from my 12 by 12 cardstock. Now you can get the 12 by 12 cardstock in every color family. So we have, we can retain this for the other page I'm gonna do later. And I'm gonna tear this one. So this is for you, Liz. And just know that my heart's in the right place. <laughs> so, and you can come in here and you can add, ooh, that's too thin. Let's use this side. You can add some, um, oh, let's say, what can you add? You can add, like ink to the edges of these with a sponge, but I'm going to, and I think, do I want to use some gold? Where's that gold I just had? Why not add some flexigold here? I don't usually tear my foil paper, but you know what? Today's a new day. We're going to tear some foil paper. If it is even feasible, maybe you can't. Ooh, you can't tear the foil paper because of the plastic coating in the back. Okay, that was short-lived. So what I'm going to do, <laughs> I'm going to cut a strip of it. I'm going to cut a quarter inch strip by 12. Okay, and we're going to add that somewhere as well. All right, no tearing the foil paper. Liz won that battle. All right, I'm going to come in here with my seal. I'm going to put some seal on the back side of my 
um, Highland Heather. I didn't have any uh, 12 by 12 Gorgeous Grape. I think I used it all. So we're going to come in here. But again, you can buy the, the packs of 12 by 12 with, um, with each color family. Then I'm going to come in and I want to put some adhesive on the back side of this. And I want to be gentle with it because the moment you get adhesive on the reverse side, it's going to smudge and get all over and make your, it's going to dull the foil on there. So just come in with just little, you can use glue dots too if it's easier. You can use your Tombow. I'm going to come in and I'm going to decorate this strip just along the edge like so. See, like right there, I just kind of dulled that. And using my glue eraser is not going to help that. So we're going to find some flowers to cover that little spot. But that is going to go on here. My dog just opened my door, so bear with me. She just let herself out of my craft room. And my husband's sleeping in the next room, so I don't want to wake him. All right, so we're going to come in, and that's going to be our border right there. So we're gonna just use some seal. On this. And come not quite flush to the edge. You wanna leave yourself maybe about a half inch. Oops, and it moved on me. Like so. Okay, so you have that. And now we can come in and let's get some of these awesome flowers. I can use some of these. Now it might be a little tricky. I'm gonna use some pink, even though pink is not in my color scheme of my wedding, I'm gonna use them anyway. Cause it'll just add a little dimension cause there is pink, the um, blushing bride in the um, the pieces of the kit that I used. So I'm just gonna pop a whole bunch of these out. I'm gonna grab one of these circles, one of these circle tags, and we are going to maybe build a wreath around it. Let's grab our silicone mat. I'm glad you guys are hanging out with me. I know I'm like almost an hour in, but it takes a little bit longer to create scrapbook pages than it does cards from a kit. So I'll set that aside. I'm going to come in here with my silicone mat and I'm just going to add a little bit of snail so this stays where I want it to. I said snail, sorry, seal, stays where I want to. And let's go ahead, something even more amazing, those beautiful gold rings, gold hoop embellishments. These are item number, this, right? Coordinates with our, our kit, right? These item number 152474, and you get 10 of these rings in a pack. That is gonna look really nice maybe around that. We'll keep that where we want it. And let's just come in and just kind of build this. And we don't need to see the decorative edges. It's all good. Let's build this and actually, maybe I just wanna use the ring. I don't want to take away from so I almost have to build this on the I'm trying to think bear with me I want to use this ring somewhere so hmm wedding ring isn't that funny you could use two of these and make some diamond thing and you'd have yeah whatever my mind just totally went went wild I want to come in here I want to use both of these so I wonder how I can do that Let's grab, I'm gonna put these on dimensionals and see how we go with that. Let's find my sheet of dimensionals. I don't know if there is a way to layer. I, I know what I'm gonna do. We got this. It's just gonna take me a minute to be in, uh, to work it. Why don't I just build this right on my scrapbook page? That would probably be easier. Let's come in here and grab this. I just was trying to avoid mistakes, but I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put this where that smudge mark is, right here, right here. All right, so let's grab our seal. Now that I have that dimensional on there, I'm just going to put some seal here. We're going to lay this down. 
okay? Then we're gonna come in, and I'm not gonna adhere this because I think if what I have going on, it should stay where I want it in a good world, in, in a good, in a <laughs> happy world, I guess what I'm trying to say. All right, let's see. I'm just gonna add some more dimensionals around here. And let's grab those flowers that I just totally misplaced. Okay, so I'm gonna put a glue dot on one side of this flower when I find them. There they are. Thank you for being patient with me this morning, trying to figure this out. So now that I have that glue dot right there, I need another one closer to the edge. Maybe we can find a way to add this and tack it onto that gold ring so it's gonna stay in place as well. You think? We're gonna see. So let's grab another one of our flowers. And I think if we just do three flowers over here, grab this one, some glue dots, just some glue dots and I'll show you what I'm doing. Just on those two petals, close to the edge, we're gonna come in, we already got that. I'm gonna come in and layer that over and hold it down to that gold ring. Seems to be working and I want another purple flower. So I'm gonna just come over here and grab another purple flower. We're gonna peel this off. I'm getting really excited, I'm loving this. Again, you're gonna come in and grab or, um, glue dots on two of those petals. I'm not gonna lie, I've been kind of in a, in a crafting rut this week. I sat here just staring at a blank, blank canvas yesterday and I literally could not come up with a thing. So I thought, you know what? Kit to the rescue. The kit will save me for my Sunday Live with MJ. And it has. I am so excited about this. I think we can come in and if we just tuck some... Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. <laughs> it's the little things. Um... Oh, Mary, it's especially with grandkids and stuff. It's so awesome to do some scrapbooking. I had intentions of creating a scrapbook for my niece for her wedding, but I did not get around to it. Um, so I think it might be a really, uh, I don't know if she watches me on here, but I think it would be a nice Christmas present, you know, especially, you know, I mean, it, it is a little costly to do crafting like that, but when you already have all these supplies, um, sometimes it just makes sense to utilize them and make gifts for people if money is a little tight. And I think we're all kind of dealing with that with um, the pandemic. So it certainly is a nice thing to, I'm going to grab some of these bigger leaves, to be able to, do I want the bigger leaf? Yeah, no, I don't. Um, it's really nice to be able to create and make gifts for people when when money's tight. And you know those handmade gifts, like a scrapbook or you know creating um, a sampler or like a shadow box that's decorated with your Stampin' Up supplies. Um, it really can make a really beautiful home decor piece for anybody. Like at Christmas time, you can totally decorate a picture frame with um, Christmas stuff. Or, you know, you know, even like the fall stuff, you can create something so beautiful with it. I am like completely satisfied with how this is turning out. I'm just gonna take this. We only got a few more steps and I'm gonna call it um, a day for my, um, my Sunday Live. But how awesome is that? You know, and if you wanna reinforce the other side, just go ahead and stick a glue dot down there somewhere. I mean, you're gonna cover it up, but I think it's perfect. It's just gonna lay in a protective um, sleeve. It's not like it's going to um, cause any any issues <clears throat> once it's in a protective sleeve. It's not gonna fall apart. It's on there securely. So, all right, so we got all that. I'm like all out of breath here. I'm gonna take another sip of my coffee. I'm 
now where's the one we sealed so this is just going to be your normal little photo mat you can come in here and you can scatter these so i can go ahead and use my other envelope and we'll use that as a photo mat right and you can put a photo here and a photo on this one so come in with here with your seal add some seal to this card or this envelope flap or again like i said you can wet it with your aqua sorry water painter they change the names of things and then i get all misconfuddled and those can be your photo mats and we can like add some more embellishing over here by taking i'm going to show you what i'm going to do so i'm going to adhere these down so we have our mats down we're almost there sometimes it takes a lot of um time to create a scrapbook page but and i think i may have said that and that's okay i like to repeat myself all right And this one will go kind of in the center. I'm still trying to keep the same amount of border around the edge, so it's about an eighth of an inch. I wanna make sure I have the same amount of room top bottom, so that looks about good right there. Add that there. This one's gonna go up top. I've already got some dimensionals on there, so I should have actually put this mat on first. Um, when you are scrapbooking, put your adhesive in different directions. It has a better chance of staying where you want it to for years to come. Don't just do long strips because you will find that later on, because of the heat and cold and the way life goes sometimes <laughs> in your house, it may create things to fall off your page. I had an entire scrapbook fall apart and that was before Stampin' Up. I used non-Stampin' Up products and the whole thing, pages just fell and I still need to put it back together. I like cried cried because there's tons of work that goes into a complete scrapbook so make sure you're using the, the the products that are going to make sure that your your stuff lasts so you can come in here and you can add a couple more of those flowers from your sheets or you can take another one of your decorative layers from your kit like one of these and i'm not going to do this now or this one and you can cut around this and add it to the corner down here just to give it some added embellishing so you could totally pick one of those and just add that little bit of embellishing make sure it's opposite not the same as this one you want to use something different so that you still have card um, layers to make your cards so that is it for today um again i hope you enjoyed this and I'm gonna finish embellishing and all that good stuff with this with this page, and I'll do the second page. Maybe I'll find some pictures I can add to it from our wedding nine years ago so that I can actually start my scrapbook that I have not started for myself from our wedding. So again, this is the host code for um, today's little deal through this week, um, all the way through August 28th, which is Friday. Again, purchasing the kit and the stamp set will earn you these free items. Or if you already own them, go ahead and spend $50 in my online store using this host code and you will get those things for free as well. So that is six card bases that coordinate with the gorgeous Posies card kit, six whisper white envelopes, and a free pack of basic pearl jewels. Now the free pack of basic pearl jewels, uh, jewels I will have to order. So it will be a minute before you receive them because I can't, they're not cash and carry. Obviously it's a, it's a gift anyway, so it's free, but I don't have any in supply. So I would have to order them and ship them to you. So keep that in mind as well. So other than that, um, the uh, host code and a link to my online store is above this video in the description, so you can find it there easily. And I'm gonna come to you later on this week because I got my paper pumpkin for the month of August, and I'm not gonna open everything, but it is that wonderful paper pumpkin kit to celebrate our heroes. There's a teacher stamp, um kid coach friend a lot of celebratory things here that you can do for the kids going back to school um honoring you know you're the best you deserve a medal um this calls for a celebration world's greatest number one um it's got like a ribbon um and like the whole banner like if you're giving someone one of those um medals with a banner on it 
those kind of stamps and of course the Pacific Point ink spot. I'm gonna break into this sometime in the middle of the week in the evening um, just to help break up my week that I have ahead uh, so we can craft together again. So you can look forward to that and I will announce when I'm going to share that with all of you as soon as I am able. Um, so I hope you all have an amazing, amazing week. Uh, count your blessings, be grateful, and just continue to, to hug your family as tight as you can. They're the safe ones that you can hug right now, right? <laughs> all right. I love you all and, um, go enjoy your day. And if you can go make some cards, send them to someone that you love and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.